Welcome back, Akron fans, to another exhibition match. I've blown my nose, and let's get started. In case you're wondering, I have a cold. Anyway, we're on Rooftop Showdown between Kitan and Jay Raccoon. Kitan on the west side of the map, not chosen his species yet, and Jay Raccoon on the east side of the map is also choosing his species. Not sure what he's going for yet. Both players just setting up. Ah, Grekin for Kitan, and not sure Jay Raccoon. We'll see what he goes for once he unpauses. So, when he unpauses, I'm not sure if he... Actually, I did check over the replay before for some other purposes related to graphic stuff, and... J. Raccoon takes a while to unpause, so don't worry too much about it. This replay is not broken if it takes a minute for J. Raccoon to unpause, because that was about how long it took, I think. So, anyway, Kitan getting up his economy going, moving his Akron forward, as we mentioned before, this is assassin mode, where Akrons exist, there's... One Akron per player. They have their own sort of special models. I mean, technically these models were actually featured for campaign-related stuff, but for multiplayer, it's basically unique models. And let's see, what is is Jericho choosing anything yet? No, not yet. So this Jericho's Akron just moving forward, getting through. And once that gets in, then we'll, he'll be able to scout out. So like I said, Akrons are often used for scouts early on in the game. Because they're fairly quick and can get around. They don't do anything else. So you might as well scout with them because you can echo that out. Even if they get killed, it's not a big deal. So yeah, this this Guardian Akron is taking a little while to get in. But that's not a huge deal. It's just it's taking a little while to get in. So... Hmm. So, Kitan, building up his economy, he has four RPs built up already, so clearly not going for any major rush strategy, but at this point he doesn't know what Jericoon is up to, since Jericoon hasn't actually been up to anything. He has not unpaused yet. There we go, now he's unpaused. Now he's going for Vekir, and Lachesis, which is the Vekir Akron. And... Yes, there's a small spoiler warning about the Assassin mode that... The names used are from the campaign, so if you really cared about the campaign spoilers, there might be some minor spoilers about what characters are where in the campaign. But I'm not going to spoil it by telling you what is actually based on the campaign and what are just names that are convenient. But anyway, Akron for Kitan getting killed off, so Kitan losing his Akron. He is now at the point in time where he can't actually command anything because his Akron's dead. But his Akron wasn't moved back. Where's his Akron? No, it's still dead here, so he's moving out of the way, but it's no big deal. So, J. Raccoon. Both players have their Akrons crossing each other, so Kaiden now fully... Well, Kaiden has been fully aware of what J. Raccoon's been up to for a while in terms of his own species. So, Kaiden just needs to echo out this... Or, just escape, really, not even echo out, just retreat with, with his Akron. And J. Raccoon has... His Akron scouting has not propagated yet to where Kaiden is, but Kaiden will be seeing it right now, actually. Right in the middle of... Jericho's base, so nothing going out to attack it yet. I'm not sure if. I mean, clearly, not having enough resources is causing his Octos to go off to attack the Akron. Getting rid of that wouldn't be a bad idea, though. I mean, it really. Just. Really get rid of that. Just remove it, get it out of the way, and then deal with everything else. So, once again, just pretty basic setup economically for J Raccoon, setting up his RPs. Both players going for basic economic setup while scouting. They aren't doing any rushes. Either Neither one's doing any major rushes. We don't even see a foundation yet for Jericoon. My minute in, so he's definitely not going for any major depot rushes. Though, on the other hand, Kitan hasn't even gone for an early Q-Plasma RP to get early Octopods, so neither player is particularly worried about opening rushes from the other. I suppose they'd see it with their Akron, so it's not a big deal. But Yeah, it does seem like all-in rushes might be a bit weaker on this game type, despite the fact that Akrons are the single point of failure. Because they can just scout out everything and then you don't have to worry about doing all in defense and I guess all in rushes you see them coming really and if you see all in rushes coming then that eliminates the surprise factor of the all in rush which makes it not work. What the Anyway, so with with that we see there isn't Really too much going on with that. They just have Mayato going through, and this we keep seeing. Kitan keeps jumping back to this point. I think he's trying to get his Akron back, or Jericho needs to jump back to this point. 
Getting a depot, there we go, this was changed. So a new depot, 226 mark, getting himself ready to build up vehicles. So Jay Raccoon will be able to get some Zion Pulses fairly soon. And Rooftop Showdown, me Rooftop Showdown, usually the games here are quite quick. Usually, once players get set up, it's pretty quick from then to victory or defeat for one of the players. So it's not going to be that big of a deal. It shouldn't take too long to get through, but it looks like Lakis is being hidden off in the north side of the map, so Jay Raccoon being really cheeky, hiding his Acron in the north side of the map, while Kitan keeping his Acron in his main base. Or is he? Yes, he is. Because the thing with Grekum is that they, the reefs heal up their Acron, whereas Vecure usually doesn't get enough foundations to heal up anything that they have effectively. And Zion Pulse are coming up for Jay Raccoon. I think another one will be coming up fairly soon. Or... Well, he can't get Skip Teleport out right now. He's not building up any further ones right now. I'm not sure why. And... Reef coming up for... Kitan. He is building that up, getting more Octos for more... RPs. So he's getting his economy going, and he has a nice little bubble wrap on his Akron. So not just bubble wrap, but a tanking bubble wrap. Like, all this HP right at the front. So any frontal assaults will just get stopped. Advanced Arch is being built up, so Arians will be coming up very soon, while well, J-Raccoon has not actually done anything further. He's getting more Zion Veers, probably with the intent of, well, either expansion or... Actually, probably expansion. Probably not using them to build up Zion Pulsers too much. I don't see anything on the map that really suggests that. So, Kitan is... Kitan has his air units. He has a Spire. He has his Triad built up. He has not enough Q-Plasma to actually build any air units, though. But he does have the Spire. He can very quickly get a Sepi Pod once he gets the Q-Plasma for it, probably in about 30 seconds. And at the same time, getting more RPs to the south side of the map. So, at the same time, J-Raccoon is getting another Zion Pulsar, but not using them. He, I'm not sure he's waiting for them until the pass to happen or what. He has not even gotten any... He hasn't gotten Skip Teleport or anything on them. Unless he's planning on defending against an Assault in his main base that's meant to act, act like a trap. He might be doing that. In which case... It won't work, because Kitan is building up air units. You don't want to do that against Vecure unless you have a bunch of anti-air units as a trap. Sorry, against Grekum. Because Grekum is always going to go for air units as their main assa assault force. Occasionally they might go for Octopods or Octopod Faro, but usually it's going to be Sepipod Faropod, especially at this stage in the game. But no, here we go. Zion Pulse are coming in, attacking the main base. Going from the south though, not got Skip Teleport. And where's the other Zion Pulsar? Hasn't been built yet from the looks of it. So Kitan is just setting himself up, trying to find out where that Akron is to get rid of it. Unfortunately, one Zion Pulsar will not be enough, won't deal enough damage to get rid of this Akron. It will, the reefs are too powerful for healing. But also, he's also double checking to make sure that he doesn't miss anything here. And Nat is on move, so he's not attacking yet. Yes, yeah, so from so Kitan jumping back here at the 602 mark, he is attacking. He is trying to get rid of these Q Plasma resource processors, and that's a very good idea. Really, he should be doing that. But he's changed around his order, so he's not going to be doing that as efficiently as he would have. And I'm a little bit surprised he isn't getting Skip Teleport. He has the money to get Skip Teleport in these two. This one here doesn't really matter. It's too close to the enemy base for it to work out effectively. But these two, or these three... No, he doesn't have the Q Plasma RPs for any further ones. But yeah, Zion Pulse are coming in, dealing a lot of damage. And... He's not using the Zion Pulse. Why are these Zion Pulsers staying here? There we go. Okay, now he's using them. He's getting them hierarchied up, and now attacking. Attacking directly, which will find the Akron, but at this point, Sepipods have been built, so it's not enough. Zion Pulse is trying to do what it can, taking care of this resource processor, but it's not going to do it, I don't think. I mean, it might do it. He might be able to take care of but, yeah, I don't know. That's still kind of iffy. The Sepipod is doing what it can, but... No, even with Zion Pulse, Zion Beer still is not able to do enough. The Sepipod does fine. I don't know why it said it was doing what it can, because what it could was absolutely wonderful. It was able to do a great deal of damage to that Zion Pulsar and get rid of the Zion Beer. So really, no harm done for Kitan. He's he's lost nothing in the meantime. He, Well, he got an RP slightly damaged, but Reeds can heal it up. It's not a big deal. Now, these three Zion Pulsars, that's where it really runs into a question of how well this is going to work. And the answer is going to be... 
but we'll see. But it should work decently well. It's a question of how well these Sepipods can actually defend. Zion Pulsar running away will be destroyed, so one of the Sepipods is distracted, another Sepipod in the main base, but against three Zion Pulsars. The only downside is one of them is too far in front of the other two, so the other two can't actually really work out. They got... They got slowed down in traffic from the looks of it, and they're hanging back, so Titan can actually just move this Sepipod in position to deal with it, but Sepipods are still distracted, but not distracted enough, so... Zion Pulsars are not moving in enough, by the way, to find anything other than the Arcticus, so not able to spot that Akron, not able to destroy anything. This Arcticus tanking, but he is moving forward, and he does find the Akron. Not sure he's going to go for it. Not going for a straight attack on the Akron. Instead, it looks like he's going for economy, or at least distracting the Semipods. While the other two Zion Pulsars come back around and pick up the slack. But at the same time, Jericho not building up. He is... Or moving towards the future to build up. He is... Relying on these two Zion Pulsars quite a lot. Kitan further in the past, right at the Impelable Past Edge, should be able to take out everything that Jericho has. However, with the damage being dealt, you know, no, the damage, even the damage being dealt won't be enough. Trying to distract the reefs with damage to the RPs, but the RP is too far away for the reef to heal it without this reef here. But the reefs are not connected at this point, so these two reefs, or these Arcticus being taken down by the Zion Pulsar here. Jericho can do what he can, but I'm pretty sure these Sepipods will be coming back around once Kitan gets the Chrono Energy to do that. But it will be a little while. Kitan actually, he's his Arch is going to be very nearly completely damaged before that happens, but he is still going to be able to do that in time. Zion Pulses won't be able to get rid of this Arch and that means Jericho won't be able to decap properly decapitate Kitan's command structure. So, close, but not quite, unfortunately. He didn't manage to get in there. And is he is he getting... He is getting an aerial control center. Not sure if he's going to be going from there to try to get anything related to anti-air. He's going to try to go for bombers. I'd expect anti-air to try to win the air game. Though it is difficult to, for Vector to win the air game. And he is going for Teth Churchers. Getting one Teth Churcher up. Might be getting another one. But I'm not sure. That looks like that came from the Teth of Ear he had earlier. So he has one Teth Churcher up. He has... Trying to fight three Sepipods with that. Or no, four Sepipods with that. Roaming around the map, and a few Faros now. Looks like... Yeah, three Faros going over to the north side of the map. And... No, six Faros going over to the north side of the map. And I think he may have... Oh, he's going towards this expansion. I don't know if he's found the Akron here that Jerekun has, but... Kitan is just spamming out Sebipods. While j Raccoon getting some more Ted Turchers and a Zion Turcher. Not sure the Zion Turcher, probably for just attacking the main base while the Ted Turchers distract the Sebipods. But these Teth Churchers are not going to be able to do super well against the Sepipods. They are, they're slower than the Sepipods, and they don't have that much less, they're that much more health for the and for the damage. Yeah, they deal less damage as well, so they're a bit tougher, but deal less damage. So having fewer of them is a bad thing. And a Shin Pulsar. Wow, Shin, seriously? That's that never happens. Well, okay, no one ever builds Shin Pulsars like, ever. I've I can't remember the last... I mean, I build Shin Pulsars from time to time for scouting, but as part of a direct attack force, that's new. Anyway, Kaiden is nice to set up on the north side of the map. Looks like he's probably going to try to expand there, although I don't see any Seppis coming up to help with the expansion. Octo's coming up for RPs to spread across the map, but I don't see any Seppis being built up. And here we go. Teth Churchers and Shin Pulsar coming in for J Raccoon. And he is able to take care of that... Oops. He is able to take care of that pretty quickly. There is... Well, two RPs going down quickly. That's a that's 160 LC right there going down. And Kitan, I'm not sure if he was saving he's saving up for Gate Tech or just because we're further in the future. Kitan, when he is, is building up enough and he has enough to take care of that, so he's not going to be losing ultimately to this. These Teth Turchers now coming in once again, but this time round to Sepipod resistance and the Shin Pulsar going down quickly as well. Teth Veer, however, doing what it can, and actually the Teth Veer is probably gonna be far more useful than the Teth Pulse the Teth Churchers ever were. Teth Pulsars would actually be a good idea though. And we don't see the end of the combat yet. Starting over again, we see that Faros are coming in to take care of the Teth Veers once they come along. And wisely, J. Raccoon avoids the fight because he cannot win this battle. He needs more units. He needs to build up more and more. And getting his RPs actually also towards this side of the map. Makis is still hanging out in the north side of the map, not doing too much. And Guardian in the west side of the map, keeping itself safe behind the reefs. And a bunch of Sepipods coming over here, which will be able to take care of pretty much anything in the skies at this point. 
So like I said, Teth Pulsars might help out. Teth Halcyons would probably help out quite a bit. Teth Halcyons have, have had a massive range increase since the last patch, so they'd probably be able to survive long enough to work. But J Raccoon not really building much of anything right now. He's focusing entirely on economy. No, no military for him at the moment. And Titan going for an assault on the main base. And we see J Raccoon going to this assault. And Red right Star Semipods coming in, dealing quite a bit of damage, but or will be dealing quite a bit of damage. And right away the Shin Pulsar almost completely killed. Wow, that was one shot. That was one shot. But Titan. Holding back a bit, waiting for the Faros to come, and then ass assaulting, because the Faros here will take care of any Veers that drop down. So, right now, Guardian, uh, the Akron for Kaiden is in the middle of his base, whereas the Akron for Jericho is over in the north. So, Kaiden, if he finds that Akron, could very, very easily win. Although, if he just sla slaughters the entire base, he'll win that way too. But, if he... I think... Actually, I'm not sure if that, that, that should be the case. I think it might be fixed in the point release that's coming up fairly soon. But right now, Zion Church are getting rid of most of the Faros, but unfortunately the Faros are still able to take care, of, take care of the Veers before they're able to rebuild. And Jericho having nowhere near enough Chrono Energy to pop units back into the depot when he needs to. Looks like he might be trying to, but he really doesn't have the Chrono Energy to do that when he needs to, and he's losing everything. His entire main base is going down very quickly. And I, yeah, I don't see any way that Jericho could just eke out a win by barely killing the Akron that Titan has, I think he, this is it. I think that's game. I really don't see any way he could get out of this. I'm trying to think of some, but from this position, he's basically lost. He's massive force coming out. I mean, Zion Pulsars would get torn apart by the air. Teth Halcyons he doesn't have. Teth Pulsars would get torn apart by the Faros. And Zion Halcyons would have been a good idea, but he doesn't have enough money for it in the first place. So J-Raccoon surrenders! Yep, that's the game. So, that was... That barely took advantage of the fact that it was playing Assassin mode, but it worked. So, Jericoon surrenders after a pretty... Well, pretty lopsided game, actually. I don't think Kaiden ever really didn't have the upper hand. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll have another game coming up shortly, so stay tuned.